Hello and welcome to this presentation of JNVM, a persistent object framework for Java. My name is Anatol. I'm a third year PhD student at Telecom Paris. And this work, which has been developed together with all the other co-authors, aims at providing in Java an easy and efficient access to non volatile memory by relying on off -heap techniques and building persistent object abstractions on top. All right, first, a bit of context in case you've, you'd have missed the quite recent agitation around persistent memory. Um, so in essence, non volatile memory is a new kind of device that connects on the memory bus and shares properties with storage and memory at the same time. Memory because it's high performance, very low latency, very high bandwidth. Storage because the data to it will resist reboots and poor cycles. But probably the most interesting features of all is that it's byte addressable just like memory because it connects to the memory bus. And this is what makes it all the most exciting. Applications will now be able to directly work and do computations on the durable data without having to import them first from storage. If these devices actually become more widespread, we could expect applications in the end to clearly remove a lot of clutter from the code bases by simply eliminating all the codes that are right now dedicated to storing data onto files. Java may not sound like an obvious choice when it comes to bringing persistent memory to languages, but truth is there is lots of engineers working on modern data stores and processing frameworks, just to name a few, Spark, Kafka, Flink, and these would greatly benefit from efficient interfaces to access NVMM. Unfortunately, the two evident interfaces are simply no-goes. Using a file system on a PMEM device will deduplicate the data between storage and memory, and these deduplications lead to high cost in marshalling to get the data in and out of the storage, but also in caching and in consistency algorithms to keep the cache consistent with the data on storage. We could validate this with YCSB and a few file systems. This figure on the right hand side just shows that the volatile executions comes always faster than any of the other file systems, but also that the relative difference between all those file systems is very small. And as things turns out, an old file system that does nothing only goes marginally faster than a BMM file system that actually writes data. As there exists no persistent memory library for Java, one would have to resort to using another one through JNI, the Java's native interface which isn't doing very well if you try to instrument all of your transactions or updates to memory. Overall, we only need a simple thing, a Java native solution. We are clearly not the first one to come and propose a Java native solution to access persistent memory. We've seen in the literature some of the designs, ideas, but they were all what we call internal, meaning that they are focused on making the persistency managed at the level of the runtime, which comes with some limitations in terms of programming model, but also in terms of performance. As the GoPMEM authors noted, as the application becomes more complicated, it becomes increasingly difficult to keep track of exactly which variables and pointers are in persistent memory. So this is what happens when you don't have specific types and you try to make any objects able to be either on the volatile or on the non-volatile side of the heap. And because the objects on the non-volatile side of the heap are also managed by the language, they contribute to putting pressure on the garbage collector. With persistent memory, we're talking of scales of at least 100 gigabytes, and we've made short experiments in both CoPMEM and Java to demonstrate that those two garbage collectors cannot scale past this limit. So when we increase the number of objects on the heap, we found that inevitably the performance diminished and uh, the completion time was highly affected. And lastly, because those runtimes are being enhanced for PMEM, it's often very hard to get them accepted back in the main line because they go through very heavy modifications. One total example is AutoPersist, which was too complex to be implemented in OpenJDK and was implemented in the end in a research-oriented JVM. Their implementation also had to dynamically instrument any bytecodes to check whether an object was non-volatile or volatile, and this made the whole JVM run 10% slower after their highest degree of reoptimization when even no durable objects were being used. All right, enough of context. Let's jump to JNVM, the main topic of this talk. Um, first, we'll go through the system design and programming model. Then we'll go through the tools that we provide to help development with JNVM. And finally, the evaluation where we will show the YCSB benchmarks and the recovery experiments. And then followed by a conclusion on the main takeaways of this article. JNVM has been designed around the same challenges as the prior works we've just seen. That is, single data representation and direct NVMM access. 
process, but with a special focus on the reliability of the programming model and the scalability of the heap management. Following those two principles, we combine in JNVM a persistent object abstraction with dedicated types and an internal PMEM heap managed using the unsafe interface. Let me now explain how we make this combination of ideas work together. The key idea to achieve this in JNVM is to decouple persistent objects into first a persistent data structure which is allocated off heap on NVMM and not managed by the Java runtime, and second, a special object that is allocated on a heap and managed by the Java runtime and that we call a proxy. We augment this core idea with tools to make it practical. A code generator to automate the decoupling of plain old Java objects, a failure atomic construction to make any piece of code crash consistent, and a library of persistent data types that provides collections written for non volatile memory. In addition, the low-level API remains accessible to experts and a recovery time garbage collector can be used to repair inconsistencies when failure atomicity is traded for performance. Simply put, with this decoupling principle, persistent objects have their attributes and fields located on their persistent data structure, whilst their methods are held in their proxy which acts as a handle to the data structure. One very nice thing is that the proxy can be instantiated lazily when dereferencing a persistent pointer. This keeps small the number of live objects on here and limit the pressure on the GC. Proxies are special in that they need to follow a very specific life cycle. Persistent objects will outlive their proxies, so in addition to a constructor, we also need a reconstructor and a destructor. The constructor simply allocates a block of NVMM for the objects and attach it to the proxy. The reconstructor just takes an address and rebuilds the proxy from there, and the destructor explicitly frees the data structure and detaches the proxy. Building proxies by hand requires a bit of expertise, that's why we make it trivial for most cases by providing a code generator. It works at the bytecode level and runs as a post-compilation goal for the Maven build system. It only has a few goals, first generating the off-heap layout for the class. Note that only non transient fields are moved, it makes it very easy to partition between volatile and non-volatile fields. Then we generate the object constructors. Later, we wrap non-private methods with failure atomic blocks. Finally, we replace the non-transient fields and their accesses, as well as generating the field accesses, of course. Failure atomic construction we provide is just as simple to use as transactions. It is based on the persistent read log, which logs logical operations, such as new, free, or updates. On updates, a block of PMEM is deduplicated, and the in-flight version of the block is made accessible seamlessly through the proxy. The persistent log is thread local because data races can be handled externally with or without locks. The persistent data types we provide with JPDT are drop-in replacements for some of the types from the JDK. The general design philosophy for them was to follow the same decoupling idea. The data structure should only hold the bare data in PMEM and the logic should always, as much as possible, be implemented by existing volatile collections. The PDTs also extensively use the low-level API and optimizations like the validation trick to provide better performance. Let's now move on to the evaluation part and start with the YCSB benchmarks. So we've run these on our server with Optane DC modules generation one. We use YCSB workloads on InfiniSpan, a Java data store for which we developed several durable backends. PCJ is the PMDK approach. FS is the default backend for files that we use with a DAX file system. JPDT is our encrafted map and JPFA is a map made persistent using failure atomic blocks. Our framework in Orange is consistently faster and by a large margin compared to the other external approaches with the same level of guarantees. An interesting takeaway from this benchmark was that the combination of off-heap and direct memory access made it completely irrelevant to cache the benchmark data in volatile memory with JNVM. Our recovery experiment was made using a TPCB-like benchmark with a large, a large number of accounts. After a minute, the server was killed and restarted then. We clearly see that JNVM is restarting way earlier than the file system backend. The Vartic backend restarts from an empty state and it serves only as a baseline here, and JNVM is just a few seconds behind. We've also noted that for this workload, because it was purely transactional, Everything happened in a failure atomic block, and as such, the recovery procedure could be made much simpler because it does not require the full GC pass that we normally do on recovery. So we also provide the node GC yellow curve that depicts the cost of recovery time GC 
on 10 million objects. To conclude, JNVM is an AFI persistent object framework for Java that is efficient and practical. It decouples persistent objects into an unmanaged data structure and a proxy object that to avoid GC cost with large data sets and to provide a safer programming interface. The only drawbacks would be that the free is explicit, but that's only common when you manage durable data anyway. And code reuse might seem like limited, but as stated by auto persist authors, things like adding a PNU for every allocation that has to be made non-volatile is simply too hard on larger code bases because, because one would have to trace every access to durable data in the application.